Hi guys, Humam here, and today I'm gonna talk about the easiest way for you to win your first government contract and get started with government contracting. And to make this possible, we need to find the easiest government contracts to win, and those are simplified acquisitions and micro purchases. Before we start, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. So, getting started with government contracting can be extremely hard. You try climbing this very high wall, and then you probably fall down the couple of times. And this is especially hard for small businesses that are just getting started. One of the reasons could be that you don't have the necessary past performance record to win the opportunity. And another reason could be that you don't have the reputation in the industry or maybe you don't have any established connections with the government which makes it very hard for you to get selected. Running your normal business could be completely different than doing work with the government. You have to comply with all the requirements that the government sets in place and then you have to read through lengthy documents, you have to know how to submit proposals, and so on. What I want you to know is that many times it may seem that the effort that you're putting into kickstarting your government contracting journey is futile, but in reality you can be very close to obtaining your first opportunity. And what we need to do here is to take micro steps. We don't need to take a huge leap that could be very challenging to where we are today. And that's why an excellent solution if you are starting out is to focus on small contracts because they have a shorter turnaround time, they have less paperwork, and it's a great way for you to start building relationships with the agencies that are nearby. And in the context of government contracting, we have two obvious candidates for small contracts. Micro purchases designate all the purchases the government make below $10,000. And then we have simplified acquisitions. And those are all the opportunities that the government make below $250,000. There are many exceptions to this $250,000 in the case of simplified acquisition, but we are just getting started and we don't really need to dig deep into irrelevant details for this stage. So why should you really care about those small opportunities? The government spends 20 billion annually on those small purchases. There is an abundance of those small opportunities. So it's not like you have a few opportunities that you're going to choose between. The government has made the process of winning these opportunities less complicated and more intuitive so that small businesses can start working with the government. It's a completely different process from how you would work with a normal solicitation. And that's why it's an excellent choice for you as a small business to get started. So let's start by looking at micro purchases they are the absolute simplest way for you to get started. First, they require minimal documentation. You don't have to think a lot about the paperwork. And then there is no competition required. What we mean by this is that if the contracting officer find your business a suitable candidate, the opportunity you're pursuing, then they could just grant you this opportunity without waiting for other candidates. And then, as we mentioned, we have a $10,000 standard threshold. So. What are the advantages of micro purchases? Well, for first, they are fast and easy to win. In many cases, it would cost the government more money to do a background check on your business and to have a contracting officer specifically trying to see if you're the, the right fit or not for the purchase the government is trying to make. And that's why these purchases are made to be as fast and as seamless for the contractor as possible. Second, you don't need to register with sand.gov. You don't really have to put a lot of energy and work in setting things up. Third, as we mentioned, there could be no competition at all. If the contracting officer deemed your business 
suitable to the micro purchase the government want to make, then you're good to go. And micro purchases are intended only for small businesses. So you can rest assured that you are not competing with larger businesses. And lastly, the bidding process is seamless and fast. So you get instant gratification and it's a very good way to kickstart your government contracting journey. And now we come to simplified acquisition threshold. As we mentioned, it's around $250,000. And as we mentioned, there are exceptions that could raise this value to the seven digits, but we're not gonna focus on them. So what are the benefits of using simplified acquisitions? And here I'm gonna try to break it down for the government and for you as a contractor. Kind of similar to micro purchases, it's a fast procurement cycle, not as fast as uh, micro purchases, but still fast. And then we have reduced costs, increased efficiency, and most importantly, we give the valuable small businesses the support that they deserve. And then for you as a contractor, it's an easy entry point for you into government work and you get quicker pay payment terms and you get the chance to build relationships. And believe me when I say that building relationships when it comes to government contracting is one of the most important things that you need to think about when just getting started. And then of course, you have less complex proposals. So if you are ready to get started, how do you actually get started? Well, you gotta introduce yourself. Any normal business out there would hand out flyers, will try to do some marketing to let their business be known in the community. And it's the exact same concept here. You gotta network, you gotta reach out through events, emails and phone calls. And I will walk you through how we can find those emails and phone numbers. To get you started and then you can ask your local agency for a simplified acquisition procedure guide which could be very helpful to get you started and lastly we can do this by some magic using free government tools such as sam.gov and fpds.gov so let's get started with sam.gov and see how we can utilize it to get our simplified acquisition opportunities. So we start by clicking on contracting and then on advanced search. After that, we can type in simplified acquisition in the keyword search field. And you see here that you'll get 1,154 results, which is quite a lot. So we wanna try to narrow down these results as much as possible to make our lives easier. We can do this by clicking on notice type and then we can choose free solicitation those are notices that the government issues before a solicitation becomes a solicitation if you understand what i mean so if you want to be ahead of the competition it's good that you keep an eye on them and then we can focus on solicitation and combine synopsis slash solicitation and then you can go ahead and enter the response date that you think you can manage I think that uh, next month could be something realistic to many businesses. And then I would recommend you to type in your NAICS code to narrow down the results to your niche. And here we can see that we got 262 results. So this is how you can pursue active simplified acquisition notices out there. Let's say that you want to introduce your business to the government and you want to get those emails and phone numbers we talked about. What you can do here is you can click on reset to reset all filters. And as before, we will type simplified acquisition, enter. And now, instead of uh, choosing solicitations, we will choose award notice. You can go ahead and click on inactive opportunities also. And by this, you get a list of awarded simplified acquisition opportunities on sam.gov. But as you see, the list here is very small. So if you really want to introduce yourself and invest some time and effort into this, I highly recommend you to check out fpds.gov. fpds.gov is another free government contracting website 
where all awarded opportunities are published. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this placeholder sentence and then I'll press enter. This will make an empty search. What I'm really interested in is creating an advanced search. This is an advanced channel, so we only work with advanced search. So I'll click on advanced search and then we'll choose new search because this is the first time we start searching and then I'll click on add. You want to choose action obligation and here you see two fields from and then to. Here you want to type in the awarded contract value that you think your business is suited to. Let's say that it is $20,000. So click on search. This usually takes a few seconds. And as you see, as you see here, we got 86 million results, which is quite a lot. So what you want to do as usual is to narrow down the search even more. And this time we will search within our results. I'll click on add and I can scroll down until I reach solicitation procedures. And here I want to write simplified. Let's see how many results we get now. There we go. We narrow down our results quite a lot, but still we need to make more adjustments. And here we can go to date signed and choose relevant dates. So let's say I'm only interested in opportunities that were awarded from the 1st of March until today. This should reduce the number of results by a lot. And as we see here, we have 30,000 opportunities only. I know that you want to dive deeper so we can go ahead and we can choose the description of requirement. And here you can type in a keyword that exists in the description of requirement. This is quite handy because if you work maybe with cleaning opportunities, then you can just write cleaning. And hopefully if the opportunity is about cleaning, then you can narrow down the result as much as possible. Here you can see that we got 535 results. And of course, you have a lot of filters here that you can look into, but I just walked you through one of the most important ones. And as you see here, you have next, you have next description. So you can use all of these things to narrow down the results as much as possible. One last sort by date signed. I think it makes a lot of sense to look at the most recently awarded opportunities. So why did we go through the trouble of finding those awarded opportunities on fpds.gov it is because by viewing all of these opportunities we get a lot of free data we see the prepared user that worked on this opportunity we see the action obligation which could be very interesting when setting your prices because if you can see what people paid before and get tons of free data that you can reuse what's very cool here is that you have a solicitation ID that you can copy and if you go back to sam.gov instead of simplified acquisition and award notice we can paste in the solicitation ID that we got from FPDS make sure to choose inactive opportunities also because it's most likely that this opportunity will be inactive what we got here is the exact solicitation that was awarded on fpds.gov. Here we get all the relevant data that we can use to reach out to people and to do our market research when trying to bid on similar opportunities. If we scroll down a bit, we get the primary point of contact and we can reach out to them. We have their name, their phone number and their email. Before we finish, let me just show you how easy it is to use Sam Search's AI powered search to find simplified acquisition opportunities. So I will head to Sam Search and then I will choose the tab for AI powered search and then I will type in simplified acquisition. Let's say that we are interested in janitorial services maybe. And then we just want to look at active opportunities because in many cases, Sam.gov has active opportunities with a past due deadline. And 
let's see the first opportunity that we got we got janitorial services as we just typed and then we see here that we we see here that it is actually a simplified acquisition procedure uh, with a set aside for small businesses and the size standard is 22 million dollars which means in this context that a company is considered to be a small business if its annual revenue is below 22 million dollars in short that was all for me guys thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one bye